Good morning. Welcome here at the Ark of the Covenant Church of God by Faith. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. It's a blessing to come before you one more time. We are grateful for you being with us on today. We bless God for your presence. We bless God for you that are tuning in so far. It's a blessing to have you to be a part of our service on today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we share with you us and be glad. We're glad for this opportunity to come before you on such a beautiful day that the Lord has made. And we welcome all of you in the name of Jesus for being a part of our service on this morning. Even those that are here, thank God for you tuning in with us on this morning. It's a blessing to be with you one more time. Pray that you've had a blessed day, a blessed week. We praise God, amen, for you that are here, and it is a blessing. At this time, we're going to get ready to open up our service for this morning, and we honor the spirit of the living God. I want to tell you, amen, expect God to do something, expect God to move, expect God to speak, expect God to deliver. Whatever you need God to do, expect him to do it. Because this is a time and season which we are living in. Even though we are living in a time of a pandemic, still God is on the throne. Still God is looking down low. Come on, amen, somebody. God is still answering. God is still moving. God is still delivering. And one thing I found out about God, even in season like these, this is the best time, amen, that God come and do some of his greatest work. Because when we know that when the children of Israel was coming out and when they was going through he told Joseph, amen, to prepare for the famine that shall be in the land, that they shall still be blessed. And I want to tell you, in the blessed season, you're in the blessed time of your life, because of what you're facing and what you're going through, you still are at a blessed place in your life. So this time, we're going to bring our praise and worship leader before you. Come on, put your hands together as they come before us. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, somebody say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The song just says that he is so amazing. So we ask that you just put your hands together wherever you are. Come on, help me say it. You're amazing. You're amazing. You're amazing. Sing so amazing. So amazing. You're amazing. Sing you're amazing. Sing you're amazing. Sing so amazing. to shine and I'm so glad you're mine oh I'm glad to say you're mine say you're amazing you're amazing say you're amazing sing so amazing say you're amazing you're amazing say you're amazing Amazing. It's so amazing. You heal the sick. You raise the dead, raise the dead, Lord of all. The great I am. Oh, the sun and moon to shine. I'm so glad you're mine. Oh, I'm glad to say you're mine. Say we stand, we stand in all of you. She amazed, amazed at the things you do. Come on, say that you're holy, you're holy, and worthy is the Lamb who was slain for me. Say we stand in all of you. Say that you're holy, you're holy, 
for me. Our Lord, come for let's put those hands together. And bless the Lord. Come on. Come on. How many know he's amazing? He's so amazing. Come on, we serve a God that's amazing. God that would answer, God that would move. Come on, I don't care what you're going through, what you're dealing with. Come on, he's still amazing. Come on, he can work it out. He can change it. He can shift it. He can move it. Come on, let's give him a praise up in here. Come on, bless him. Put those hands together, Judah, and bless the Lord. Come on, he's worthy of all that praise, honor, and glory. Come on, don't just clap, but make a joy for us unto the Lord. All ye land, come on, serve the Lord with gladness and be thankful unto him and then bless his name. Come on, let's bless him. Come on, let's praise him. It's your season. It's your time. It's your opportunity. Come on, let's mark him in this place. I bless him. I praise him. I glorify him. Come on, I worship him. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on, we can bless him. Come on, we can praise him. Praise him till he change it. Praise him till he shift it. Praise him till he deliver. Come on, open your mouth and let's bless the King of King and the Lord of Lords. Come on, he's worthy. Worthy of our praise. Worthy of the honor and the glory. We bless him on today. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. I am blessed and highly favored by God. Come on, you got to speak it over your own, sir. Come on, say, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored by God. Come on, you got this. Come on, speak it over your own. I'm blessed and I'm favored by God. It's good to know that you're favored by the Father. We bless the Lord on today. For you that have tuned in with us on this morning, it's a blessing to come before you once again here in the city of Rochester, New York. Come on, put those hands together, those that are here today. We bless God for all of you that are here today. It is a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. We're going to come from Psalms 100. So I think this is a good time to read this. Psalms 100. Very familiar, Pastor Scripture. Psalms 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know you that the Lord, he is God, and it's he that is made us. And not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates uh, with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generation. May the Lord bless the hearers and the doers of his word word. He, he said, enter into what with thanksgiving. And then he said, now when you come with thanksgiving, amen, bring some praise with that. Come on, amen, somebody. Be thankful and then praise him. Be thankful and then praise him. I praise him, amen, and I thank him, amen. I thank him because I know that trouble don't last away. I'm praising him because I know I'm about to come out of my trouble. Come on, amen, somebody. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord today. For you that are here, we're going to by his word, word of prayer at this time. Amen. We believe in and trust in God that whatever you need, whatever you stand in need of, God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and gold. Now, Father, we say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity and this time to come before you. We thank for God because it was a day that was not even promised to us. But because of your grace and because of your mercy, we are here this morning to render praise, honor, and glory to your name, God. We are so thankful, God, that we was able, God, to walk in this sanctuary once again, oh God. Not because we were so good, but because of your love and your kindness, oh God. Now I pray for those that are sick, that are shed in God. Pray healing right now. Some in the hospital, God, balance diseases within their bodies, oh God. We hold them up this morning, God. Those that have called, God, those that are on their prayer list, oh God. You know their names, oh God. You know what they're battling with, oh God. And we come against God. Sickness and disease right now, God. And we pray that God, you would heal, you would move, God. Go into the room right now, God. Heal your servants right now, God. We pray that God, you would raise them off the bed of affliction, oh God. We pray that God, you would touch them right now. Some are battling cancer within their body, God. And I speak to the cancer, God, that your people are dealing with right now, God. Dried up, God. 
in the name of Jesus, God. You are able to heal. You're able to deliver, God. And I pray that, God, you will move the council right now, God. Ah, uh, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we trust and we lean and we depend upon your word, oh God. Some, oh God, are battling the breathing problem. I pray for their breathing right now, God. You would heal them, God, of their breathing right now, God. Touch them, God, in the name of you. Come against high blood pressure, sugar, diabetes, oh God. We speak wellness in the lives of your people right now, God. Touch them and heal them, oh God. And we will honor, praise, and glorify you. Now bless this service on today, God. Speak to us minister to us we pray that god the word that we speak today will bring life the word that we speak today will bring direction and healing to your people god bless it in the name of jesus we will praise honor and glorify your name for it all being done in your precious name we pray in jesus name come on amen and amen come on we bless the lord one more time we're gonna get ready to bring our praise worship leader back before you one more time as they come once again to take us higher in the lord praise the lord Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, say it again. Praise the Lord. It's my worship. Take joy in Him. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my Present my life to you. So here's my worship smile. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Here's my worship smile. my life Lord smile come and help me say here's my worship say here's my worship smile come on say here's my life Lord, here's my life, Lord smile. come on say it again here's my worship here's my Come on, say it again. Here's my worship set. Here's my worship smile. Come on, say, here's mine. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Come on, say it again. Come on, here's my worship. Here's my worship smile. Come on, say, here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Come on, say it again. Here's my worship set. Come on, say, here's my life. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Come on, say, here's my worship. Here's my worship, smile. Come on, here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Oh, smile. Want to make you smile. I want to make it 
your happy Jesus yes blessing to have men and women of God that can sing and men of God that can place gifts upon the instruments that God has blessed them to be able to use that gift in his house. It's a blessing to be able to use what God has given you 
to bring our name and glory to his name. We bless all of you that say that are here today in the audience and you that are listening live. We thank God for you being a part of our service on this morning. It is a blessing to come before you. Amen. Here in the city of Rochester, New York, for you tuning in for and near. We thank God for you that tuned in with us on this morning. And we praise God. Pray that you have been blessed already by the praise and worship that I went up before the Lord on this morning. Amen. And you must learn, amen, how to worship God in your own way. Amen, someone. I've learned you got to learn how to worship God in your own matter because sometimes, amen, everybody, everybody may not be in the same place. But you got to learn, as they say, how to build your own fire, how to strike your own match, how to put your own fuel on the fire. Come on, amen. Because what I may be going through, it may not take that for you. But what I'm going through, amen, I want to make sure that I give God the proper praise, honor, and glory that is due unto him. And that we bless God for his presence. Bless God for Pastor Sheila. And thank God for her and all our other ministers that may not be here but may be listening. And all our deacons that are here, we thank God for them as well. Praise God for each of you. You know, in the house also from some visitors. And we thank God for our visitors. Come on, let's thank God for them as well. Amen. We still spread it out, so we still uh, within compliance, but we thank God for you that are here today. I want to call your attention, amen, to a familiar passage of scripture. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4, Exodus 4, Exodus 4, Exodus 4 and 1 is where we'll be doing our reading from on today, Exodus 4 and 1, it's in the Old Testament, Exodus 4 and 1. And Moses answered and said, Behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on, it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fleed from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God is the Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared unto, do, unto thee. I'm sorry. And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, put forth thine hand in thy bosom. And he put forth his hand in his bosom. And when he had taken it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he put forth his hand into his bosom again. And he put his hand in his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh and it came to pass if they were and if it come to pass they would not believe thee nor hearken unto thy voice the first sign that i will be with thee the voice of the latter sign and it came to pass if they will not believe as if they would and it came to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto the voice that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it on the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the land. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the doers of his red word. Now, Father, we come before you now. Speak to us today. Minister to us through this word. Pray that this word will help us, change us, move us, shift us. We need a word from you, God, in a time like this. So bless this word. And I pray, God, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be something in our sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands, put your hands together and bless God. It's a blessing. Come on, we can clap a little bit better than that, and let's bless God for you. So we honor all of you that are here today. It's a blessing to have you in our service once again. Those that are tuning in with us, 
we bless God for you today. Amen. We would use for a short topic today, ministry. Amen. Ministry. That's what we want to talk about today. Ministry. And there's three things that we're going to uh, hit upon today. And we pray that it will bless you. But we want to talk about ministry. And one of the challenging things that we all face when you have been called by God or been challenged by God is ministry. Ministry is not always easy. Ministry can become very challenging when you have been called by God for a specific task. And you always have opposition against you in ministry. For the word of God said, the righteous shall, not perhaps, not maybe, the righteous shall suffer some persecution. You're going to go through some stuff in ministry. You're going to deal with some issues in ministry. And so I want to prepare anybody that's a part of ministry. Amen. You might always get your heart and mindset that you're going to have to deal with some issues in ministry. Because everybody's not going to be supportive of you in ministry. Some people are going to come against you. Some people are going to fight against you. Some people are going to try to tear you down. Amen. Some people, amen, are going to try to scandalize your name. But you got to understand, amen, amen. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. So they say ministry, ministry, ministry. So we got to understand ministry, amen. It's a job, amen, not for the weak or the faint. I'm going to say it again. Ministry is not a job for the weak or the faint, but those that can endure hardship as a good soldier. Uh, do we have any good soldiers in here today? Amen. Uh, I need to know if there are any good soldiers. Amen. You need to know you need to be a good soldier in the army of the Lord. Yeah, ministry, ministry, ministry. And I, and I found that that sometimes, amen, those that you think will undergird you in ministry may not always undergird you in ministry. So ministry, ministry is servanthood. Ministry is servanthood. Oh, my God. You've been called to serve. Touch a neighbor. Oh, well, they, they told me I can't. Well, touch your own self. Say, you've been called to serve. I know we can't say touch your neighbor, but amen. Uh, but you can touch your own. So say, I've been called to serve. I, I've been called to do the will of my father that sent me. Amen. So ministry is servanthood. Amen. Amen. Uh, and one of the differences, amen, it says it say you've been called, amen, to, be, to wait upon tables. Amen. It's like being in a restaurant. You come, amen, to serve those that sits at the table. You come to take their request. You come to take their order. And all the time, what you serve them, amen, you may not get, amen, the, the right, amen, tip in the end. You ever, amen, seen some people, amen, they had a good meal and just got up from the table and didn't say thank you. Sometimes you run across people in ministry. You can serve them. You can help them. You can motivate them. You can encourage them. And they get right up from your presence and won't even say thank you. Touching they say ministry, ministry. So ministry can be very damaging, but ministry also can be very good. So ministry. But there's three things I want to hit on. But before I hit on those three points, I want to talk about this young man by the name of Moses. Moses had been hit by God for such a time as this. It's amazing how God can hide you and begin to prepare you for what he is getting ready to launch you in. So we see that Moses was hid, but even at the same time Moses was hid, when he came up to be a, a grown young man, he found, amen, one of his brother, amen, uh, uh, fighting against another brother, and, and he slew the young man, and Moses had flee for his life which we find Moses in chapter number three, in chapter, amen, uh, he had hid and ran, and now he was serving Jethro out there keeping the sheep. In chapter number three, I'm still in the book, amen. Chapter number three, Moses, amen, is out there serving sheep out there for his father, Jethro. And as he's out there, amen, serving, amen, uh, out there in the land, God appears to him and began to call his name Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I, Lord. And the Lord said, I'm calling you for such a time as this. Now, I find it very interesting that at one point he was here, 
but now he is at a point that now he's hiding. He was hid, he's hiding, but now the call. The first thing I want to deal with today is the call of ministry. To so say the call. So sometimes God will hide you and then God going to call you. He had hid Moses for a season and Moses then hid his own self. And when Moses hid his own self, now he found that the God has found him where he thought he was hiding at. Now God appears to Moses and Moses, it's time to answer the call. To so say call. Well, what is call? Call is to come. He says, now it's time to come and do what I call you to do. It also means to be present in the time and the moment. So call us, amen. Call us to come and also to be present. I want to ask you today, are you present today? Because, amen, when you find yourself being present sometime, there will always come opposition against you. And so here it is. He's telling Moses. He said, Moses, it's time to walk in your call. And I find it interesting that now Moses is having a dialogue with God and, and he's beginning to tell God, he said, God, now listen, listen, now God, I can't do what you called me to do. How many times have we made excuses saying that we can't do what God has called us to do? How many times we have, how, how many times have we said in our own heart and mind, I'm not ready for the job. But one thing I found out about God, if God call you, he will equip you for the job. Come on, amen. God will, amen, he'll drop right down in your space. He'll drop right down in the place where you are, amen, and equip you for the call. And you got to understand, when you've been called by God, you got to have some tough skin. Tough skin. You got to have tough skin when you've been called by God. So here it is. He's telling Moses, I'm calling you. I need you to be present. I need you to show up, Moses, because it's now time to get my people and I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but God said, it's time to get my people. It's time to answer the call. It's time to answer the bell. Come on, it's time, amen, to walk in what I built you to do. You got to understand, you was built for this. Touch and they say, I was built for this. I know they say, don't touch and they, but touch your own self and say, I was built for this. I was built to go through persecution. I was built to go through hell. I was built to be talked about. I was built to be criticized. I was built to be stabbed in the back. I was built to be pushed aside. Touch somebody say, I'm built for this. My God, you got to understand you've been built for this. I don't care what come against you. I don't care who try to come against you. That's why he said no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. If I call you, I'll anoint you. I'll appoint you. I'll make full proof of what I put my hand for you to do. I'm trying not to get too happy. I got to slow down. Uh, but tell him I've been called. But I've been called. Tell them again, I've been called. So call, call. So you got to show up. You got to be present. It's not enough just to be called. But you got to be present in the call. Oh, my God. Uh, anybody present today? You got to be present in the call. You got to let the devil know I'm here to stay. I'm here to do what God called me to do. I'm here to fight the battle. I'm here to fight the good fight of faith. I've been called for this. And when you're being called, you can't escape the call. You can't escape the ministry. And I'm trying to encourage somebody today to let you know I don't care how much you try to run from it. I don't care how much you try to dodge it. God still got his hand on you. I don't care how many times you try to quit. God still got his hand on you. I don't care how many times you try to throw in this tower. One thing I learned about God, when you throw it to God, he'll throw it back at you. Come on, admit somebody. Woo! Hey, my God, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell him you can't quit. You can't quit. You can't give up. In a, it's too crucial for you to give up. Amen. We in, we in a bad condition for you to stop praising and worshiping God. Amen. We need your gift. We need your call. We need your anointing. Amen. We need your voice. So I've been called. I got to her. I can't stay long. I ain't got long to preach today. But I've been called. And when you've been called by God, you become a target by people. When you've been called by God, people will come against you. As our Sunday school lesson was this morning, when Jesus was called 
by God, he had some haters along the way. <clears throat> when they found Jesus presenting the word of God in the temple, some people didn't like how he presented the word of God. They began to say, there ain't nobody but Joseph and Mary child. He don't mean nothing. He ain't nothing. No, no, you got to understand. Amen. I'm more than what I would. I'm more than what I look like. You got to tell yourself you more than what you look like. Oh, my God. I don't care who try to tell you down. You got to say I'm more than what I'm look like. If you was nothing, they won't be fighting you like they're fighting you. If you didn't have an anointing, they won't come against you like they're coming against you. If you didn't have an anointing, amen, they won't pick on you like they're picking on you. If you didn't have an anointing, they won't talk about you like they're talking about you. If you didn't have anointing, they want to try to tear you down like they're trying to tear you down. If you didn't have an anointing, if you didn't have a voice, amen, the enemy would simply leave you alone. But since you got a voice, amen, since you have an anointing, since you have a call, since you have a desert, that's who the enemy's trying to fight along with. But you got to understand the more you fight me, the more strength I'll get. That's why I'm amen when I told them amen. They began to keep the children there. It said, the more you persecute me, the more I become stronger. We don't die, we multiply. <laughs> Ah, uh, you got to know we don't die. We simply multiply. So the first thing I must do, I must deal with the call. Uh, I got to come where God want me to come. I got to be present when God want me to be present. So Moses began to go back and forth with God. He said, God, they're not going to believe me. They're not going to accept me. Oh, God. God said, I got your back, Moses. I'm going to take care of this matter. I'm going to show you that I am God. He said, Moses, what's in your hand? So the next day we want to do it, amen. Even though you've been called, God going to give you something to work with. To then say, a rod. <laughs> uh, God going to give you something. When he call you, he give you something. Where he gives you a rod. Well, what is a rod? A rod is simply an instrument. What is your instrument that you're using today? Uh, to, to they say, I have an instrument. He said, Moses, you got to use your instrument. He said, I'm going to show you how the instrument work. Amen. Fold the instrument down. Fold down your rod. And when Moses fold down the rod, it became a serpent. It began to wiggle. Moses stepped back because, amen, he thought, amen, that, amen, that the rod was going to, amen, do damage to him. But you got to understand, amen, God used the rod to keep you in place. God will use the rod to keep you in place. And then God also used the rod to demonstrate his power. He said, now Moses, I want you to see my power. He said, grab it by the tail. And when Moses grabbed it by the tail, it became a rod all over again. That's why he was a shepherd among all shepherds. Uh, that's why when I walk through the valleys of shadows of death, I will feel no evil. That rod! The rod and the staff, they cover me, they guide me all the days of my life. They say, get your rod out. He said, get your rod, get your rod. Your rod, well, what is your rod? Your rod could be your prayer life. Anybody, anybody got a rod or prayer life? Your rod can be your instrument that you, it be your music to sing a song, you better stop now. It's prayer time. The sun is almost down. So your instrument, your rod, could be your prayer time. Turn and say, use your rod. Your rod could also be teaching. Use your rod of teaching. You need to how amen use the rod to correct and teach the men and women of God. Teach them what the word of God is saying. Your rod could also be your worship. Oh my God. Anybody know how to worship God? Anytime I get in trouble, I'm gonna use my worship. I'm gonna use my rod. Cause my rod will bring me out. My rod will bring me peace. My rod will bring deliverance. My rod will chase my enemy. My rod will make the devil be hey. That's why you gotta learn how to pray and learn how to praise and learn how to worship come on amen. you need to learn how to pray you need to learn how to praise and you need to learn how to worship amen that's part of your rod and if you can learn how to use your rod you can chase your enemy you can chase the devil you can amen chase the devil out of your home you can chase the devil out of your marriage you can chase the devil out of your children you can chase the devil out of your mind but you got to use your rod Tell them again, use your eye, use your eye. 
So he said, Moses, what's in your hand? Moses, I got a rod, God. He said, oh my God, and I throw it down, Moses, and pick it back up. He said, let me show you one more miracle, amen, by your hand, Moses. He said, hey, amen, you use your hand to throw down the rod. He said, now use your hand and put it in your bosom. Come on, amen, somebody. So when he put his hand in his bosom, amen, he pulled his hand out. He said, now pull that same hand that you put into your bosom. Pull that hand out one more time. And when he pulled the hand out, it was like leopard. It was whiter than snow. And Moses was amazed by what he seen. He said, now the same hand that turned like amen's leprous, amen, to turn like snow. He said, now put it back in. And when Moses put his hand back in. He said, now pull it out one more time. Oh my God. Oh, amen. Amen. Two amen is an agreement. So when Moses pulled it out one more time, it turned back like the regular flesh. Well, what are you saying pastor? He said, I'm going to use your hand because your hand means agreement. Oh my God. Your hand is agreement. Your hand is your handshake. Your hand amen, is the thing amen that brings confirmation. He said, I'm going to use the rod and I'm going to use your hand because I'm going to put the rod in your hand. Come on, miss somebody. I need you to agree with me right now, Moses. Tell them to say agreement. So he said, now put it in there and pull it back out. So he's seen the power and the demonstration of God like never before. Yeah, he heard God yet. He had heard about God, but he never had an encounter like this with God. He heard God speak to him in chapter number three. He said, Moses, Moses, amen, go get my people. He said, who shall I tell? He said, tell them that I am that sent you. Oh, my God. Who are you, God? I'm the beginning. I'm the middle. And I am almost over the end. He said, tell them that I am that sent you. I am the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham. Amen, amen, the God of your father. He said, that's who they need to know who I am. Amen, but I need you to do ministry touching this amen we got to do ministry we need more people ever before amen in a time like this we got to do ministry we got to do ministry in a different way we got to reach people like we never reached people before we got to amen to talk to people like we've never talked before because ministry is needed right now somebody need to get ready to walk in their call somebody need to get ready to do their ministry god said i don't need you to make excuse amen this answer the call so that's what I did. I, I reminded of myself when God was trying to call me to preach. I kept making excuses for why I couldn't preach the word of God. I kept telling God, God, I don't know why you don't use somebody like me. I don't know why you want to call somebody like me. Amen, amen. God, I may not be the one that you need to call. How I'm going to prepare a message every week for your people. God said, I didn't ask you all that. I just need you to answer the call. Uh, touch and they say, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. The phone has been ringing a long Time. The phone has been ringing and God trying to get somebody to pick it up. He said the eyes of the Lord go up and found down there to start trying to find somebody who he can show himself strong and mighty in. He said, God said, I'm looking. I'm trying to find somebody. I can show myself strong and mighty in. But the phone is ringing and they don't want to pick it up because they're scared of the call. Uh, uh, I know some calls you don't want to get. Some calls, amen, I know when it's late at night, you better go, oh God, what don't happen? Uh, but sometimes you just got to simply pick up the phone. And sometimes it may not be as bad as you think it is. Uh, but you just got the answer today and I kept making excuses why I could not answer the call and one day God said amen now you either going to do it or you going to do it another way and when I met her I said well, God I'm going to pick this phone and hello it's Nolan on the other end <laughs> today say hello <laughs> whatever your name be amen say yeah it's me God it's me I'm standing in the need of prayer because I know that you're calling me God I'm standing in the need of prayer because I know you want to use me God I'm standing in the need of prayer because you say the righteous shall suffer persecution I'm standing in the need of prayer because I know people going to come against me I'm standing in the need of prayer because I know they're going to talk about me I'm standing in the need of prayer because I know they're going to try to drag me through the mud I'm standing in the need of prayer because I know demons going to come against me. I'm standing in the need of prayer. But you told me you were with two or three together and in your name, you will be right there. Yeah, Touch your neighbor and say, God is right there. Oh, I got the herb and cold. So I got the cold and I got the raw. So when you pick up the raw, the raw also, amen, the raw of evangelists. 
Uh, you're part of your instrument you've been called to evangelize some of you have the rod of cleaning yes have the rod of cleaning some of y'all have the rod of ushering some of y'all have the rod of greeting so use your rod make sure you invite God people into his house when you stand before amen God's people make sure you greet them in the right way because you got the rod in your hand and when people pass by they need to know when they step into the house of God they got somebody that can welcome them with open arms. Come on, hey, amen, somebody. That's part of your raw. Make people feel welcome. Make people feel love. Make people feel like, hey, amen, that anything they need, they can get it right here in the house of God. Am I talking to anybody yet that has a rod in their hand? Do anybody have a rod in their hand today? Do anybody have an instrument in their hand today? Don't let people stop you from using your raw. Don't let people stop you from using your instrument. If God call you, if God equip you, he gonna prove the job that call you for. I got to hurry up and get out of here. I got the clothes, I got to give you my last point today. Uh, so I got the call and I got my rod, brother Josh. Amen. I got those two things already, amen. But there's another thing that God, amen, want to give us. And he began to talk with Moses and he got a little upset with Moses. He said, Moses, listen, God, I can't even talk that well. God said, I know you couldn't talk when I called you. Okay, I knew you couldn't talk that good when I call you, amen. Oh, oftentimes my wife would, would tease me. She said, you just a country bunker, but some people just like that country bunker. Oh, amen, somebody, amen. It doesn't matter, amen. You might be a country bunker, amen. You might be on Wall Street, but God still has an audience for you to reach. Come on, amen, somebody. So he tells him, he said, there's one more thing I want to give you. Since you feel like you can't talk that well, since you feel like, amen, you can't do it by yourself, the next this thing that God going to send you to them say help my God God going to send you some help when you answer the call tell him again help mm, my God so he begins to tell hey, Moses he said Moses I'm going to send you some help well I love the kind of help that God will give you even when you think you cannot talk when you think you can't speak well when you think everybody amen don't want to hear God said I'm going to give you a little help Moses touch your name say help 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 touch yourself say I got some help along the way uh, when God call you he going to give you help uh, with your call he going to give you the call he going to give you the rod and then he going to give you some help well what is help is right here in the scripture amen when God told amen Moses he was going to get us some help he told Moses amen because Moses began to talk about his own brother uh, yes he began to talk about he said Lord amen send Aaron um, uh, so the first thing God sent him he said I'm going to send you a Levite oh my God I'm going to send you a priest God Almighty isn't that powerful that God will send a priest to help you out in your time of trouble so God sends a Levite which is a brother Aaron so he said amen I'm going to send a Levite I'm going to send, send you somebody that also know the word like you know the word not that they got to lead and guide you amen because I call you to lead and I call them to assist you mm, my God ain't it good to know that God to send you amen the right kind of help at the right time so God said I'm going to send you a Levi I'm going to send you a man of God that's after my own heart bring it down Say amen. All right. I'm going to send you a man of God. Amen. Um, that's a Levite that knows the word of God. That's been in the priesthood. Oh, my God. Because you got to remember now, Moses has been on the run. Hmm. Now, watch this. Moses was on the run. Moses had ran because he killed a man in Egypt. So now Moses, amen, was on the run. Now, God was calling him back to go back to Egypt. And Moses, now, I don't want to go, God. I don't want to go and deal with them. Mm -hmm. God said, no, dog. He said, now watch this. What he, said? he said, everybody that came against you is dead. Oh, Y'all missed that. He said, everything that's coming against you, I'm about to kill it. I'm about to wipe some stuff out. I'm about to move some stuff from around you. So he said, I'm going to send you some help. So I'm going to send you a Levite to help you in this process. He said, not only will I send your brother Aaron the Levite, but he also, he said, Aaron is a brother. So he said, I'm going to send a Levite, but I'm going to send a brother. See, a brother loves you a little bit different than everybody else. <laughs>
he said I'm going to send you a brother that truly loves you I'm going to send you a brother that has your best interest at heart so I'm going to send you the Levite which is your brother I mean, I'm, but I'm going to send your brother he's the one that's going to help you on this journey he said I'm going to send you the Levite I'm going to send you the brother and then he said not only would I send a brother but I'm also send somebody that know how to speak like I want them to speak Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So you got a Levite, you got a brother, and you got a speaker of the house. Oh, my God. Oh, amen. You got a speaker of the house. Someone that can articulate like, like they need to articulate to other people. Because, see, there's some people, amen, that reaches at different levels. But doesn't take nothing from my call. Come on, amen. Everybody. Just because somebody can speak a little bit better, you doesn't mean that you're still not anointed. Come on, amen, somebody. That doesn't mean that you have not been called. That doesn't mean that you have not been appointed by God. You still been called. Stop letting people mess you up because you can't like everybody. You can't articulate like everybody. The devil is a liar. I'm still anointed by God. I still been called by God. I still have a ministry. I still can do. I can lay hand upon the sick and they shall. God Almighty, they shall recover. Touch your neighbors and neighbor. I can lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Ooh. So don't let the enemy downplay your call. Don't let the enemy downplay your ministry. You still have been called by God. You still have an anointing by God. So he said, I'm going to send your brother. Then I'm going to send you one that can speak well. Amen. Good to know that God can use people all around you to help you in your weak place. Mm -hmm, yeah, because none of us have arrived. None of us have all the tools that we need to do with ministry. Amen. But God sends different tools in the house to equip the saints of God. Oh my God. So you've been called to help me minister to this house. You've been called to help me to minister this assignment. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning but I hear the Lord say amen. I'm going to send you somebody that can speak along with you. And I believe I got a few in the house already. Now he's asked my last point here. He said not only amen, I'm going to send amen a speaker but someone that will be glad to see you. Because <laughs> everybody ain't glad to see you. He said, now I'm going to send your brother glad to see you. And I know I got some saints in here that's glad to see pastors sometimes. And they might glad to see me sometimes. And it's good to know that when people, amen, when people come to smile, it, it's not like that song that says back in the old day when I'm coming as a little boy, he said, they smile in your face all the time they want to take your place. Y'all know what I'm saying. But anyhow, but God said, I'm going to send you somebody that has a smile that really means you good. They really want to help you. They really want to support you. They really want to undergird you and not have a hidden agenda. Oh, my God. Say, I'm going to send some help in the house. Slap your neighbor half high. Say, some help is coming to my house. Some help about to hit my life some help about to hit my family tell them again I'm about to get some help today and I don't know who I'm preaching to today but I want to tell you get ready for your help slap your neighbor high high and say neighbor help is coming help is about to hit my house help is about to hit my life I'm about to get me a brother in the Lord I'm about to get me a sister in the Lord because I feel some help coming on the way all of my help my help come from the law so therefore you got to understand something my brother and my sister even though you might be in misery even though you think you're in the battle by yourself I got good news for you today you're not in the battle by yourself you're not in ministry by yourself God get ready to send you some help God getting ready to send you some support God getting ready to send somebody that will undergird you God getting ready to send somebody to speak into your own life God getting ready to have somebody to bless you like you've never been blessed before slap your neighbor high five and say neighbor I feel my help coming back in the old day then you just say I feel my help coming on well how is my help coming amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me I once was loved but now I'm found cause I got some help now yay though I walk through the valley the shadows of death I feel no evil for thou with me thou rod and thy staff they come to me thou prepare 
I got the clothes. A table and the presence of my enemy. God said, I got to send you back to do your first work over. He had to send Moses back to do his first work over. He said, you got to go where I assigned you. You can't run from your assignment. I'm going to tell you it again. You can't run from your assignment. When God calls you, he'll make room for your gift. He'll make room for your call. And ain't no devil in hell can block it. So what do I got to do? I got to answer the call. I got to pick the phone up. I'm just trying to encourage somebody. Tell them again, say answer. When you answer, now start using your rod. I got the clothes. I'm going to pass. I'm right on my time. I want to do about 30 minutes. I got the rod, preacher. I got it. You received the call. You got the rod. And what the enemy is trying to do, he's trying to bring discouragement to the body. He's trying to make us give up in the fight. But you understand, even though you got the rod, you still need some help sometimes. Help of encouragement. I need somebody encouraging me to let me know I'm still doing what's right. I need somebody encouraging me to let me know I'm on the right path. He said, I'm going to send a word to you through a Levite. I'm going to also allow him to help you talk. He's a brother. And he's going to be glad to see you. Because everybody ain't glad to see you always. People, I like they're glad to see you. They play like they're glad to see you. But God said, no, I'm, I'm sending you the right kind of help. I'm going to really send you somebody that's glad to be with you. I'm going to send somebody that's glad to be with you. That will support you. That will help you. That will encourage you. And that will speak along with you. Each one of them had an assignment. Each one of them. Even though Aaron was a spokesman, he could speak well. Still, God knew the heart of Moses. He said, Moses, man, I can talk like you want to talk. But I knew your heart, Doc. You're still going to deliver my people. You're still going to bring my people out. So I mean, I want to encourage somebody. Don't get caught up on your speech. Don't get caught up on your talk. Somebody going to hear you. Somebody going to hear your good news. And somebody going to be glad you came along. Because we're living in the time of intellect, of intellect, of intellect. That's what the time we're living. We're living in the time of intellect. And if you can't speak and say certain things in a certain way, they tend to tune you out. You might tune me out now, but you might need my anointing later. Come on, amen. So if the, <laughs> cause see, <laughs> when, when, when you dying from something, you don't need all that intellect. <laughs> if you dying from a disease and you don't need to, well, I perceive in the spirit realm uh, that I perceive. Uh, no, I don't need all that. You need to tell me, rise up and be made whole. Tell me what you perceive in the spirit. Tell me to rise up from my condition and be made whole. That's what I want to hear. Only all the intellect right now. Intellect is good. Come on, don't let, let me back up. Put it in part for a minute. Let me help y'all too. Intellect is good, but used in the right way. So I want you to think people, I'm, t- I'm talking against people that, that you know has real good intelligence. I, I'm not talking against it. I'm just saying there's a time and season for everything. Don't count out the one that can't speak as well as though they're nothing. They still have purpose. They still have a call. That's why God called them, because God knew there would be people that they could reach that you could not reach. There would be people that they can influence that you could not influence. All right, so don't get caught up on that. But today, ministry, servanthood, and serving God is challenging, it's hurtful, it's damaging sometimes, it's painful sometimes in serving God. That's what ministry is. He said, in this ministry, you're going to suffer some stuff. You're going to go through some hell, simply put. But don't be discouraged by what you're in. 
Because trauma don't last always. Amen. What you're going through, what you're doing, it's a season that's preparing you for your promise. I'll say it again. The season in which you're in is preparing you for your promise. What God has promised, He's able to perform. And I know the season in which we're in, I'm prepared for a promise. I'm prepared for being prepared for a land that will flow with milk and with honey. That's what I'm preparing for. So I don't know who I've been preaching to, who I've been talking to, but if you can take those three points, I believe it'll bless you. I believe it'll help you in your walk with God. I'm going to get ready to pray. Trust and believe God. Yes. I want to pray for your ministry. Because some of you are on the verge of giving up and quitting. Feeling discouraged. Feeling unheard, unappreciative. No, no. God got you. God got you. Father, I stretch my hand upon this audience and upon those that are watching. Those that have felt like giving up, help them to get back in the fight. No, help them to know they still have ministry. Help them to know the best is yet to come. Because you said in the word, the righteous, the call, the elect of God shall suffer some persecution. We're going to go through some changes. We're going to have some ups and we're going to have some downs. But you still call us to minister. You call us to wait upon your people to serve them in spite of how they may do us, in spite of what they may say about us. Help us to remember our call and our ministry. We've been called to serve your people just as Moses was called to serve your people. Everybody didn't like what he did, but he still served them. He still ministered to them. He still led them, God. Now I pray for that leader, that preacher, that teacher, that prophet, that prophetess. I pray for the evangelist, the apostle. Pray for the fivefold ministry right now. Those that felt like giving up, help them to get back in the fight. Help them to know that God, that you've called them, you've equipped them for such a time as this. I help them not to give up, but help them to get renewed today by your power, by your anointing, and by your Holy Spirit. We count it all done in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Pray that this word had blessed somebody today that have been listening here and listening live stream. Pray that this word has blessed you on today. I want to encourage you, don't give up, don't stop. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your ministry is still about the blossom. Your ministry is still coming forth. You just in the growing pains right now. That's all you in. You say, I'm so old. Well, no, you're still in growing pains. <laughs> Care how old you are, you're still in growing pains. But I want to encourage you today, if this ministry has been a blessing, if this word has blessed you, go to our Facebook, our website, so give. And I promise you, the Lord is going to give it back to you. He's going to bless you. He's going to allow you, amen, to reap a harvest in a time and season of your life. So go to our website. You can give on Give a Fire. You also give on our cash app. Amen. It should be up on the screen now. Amen. That you can look at those different ways of giving. So give to us and in return we're going to continue to pray. Because I hear the Lord saying, your season has just changed. Your season has just changed. Your season has just changed. The seed that you're sowing right now has just changed your season. Yes, yes, yes. The seed that you just sowed. It just changed your season. It changed somebody coming out of something and walking into something. That's what I just heard. So know that the seed that you give is a harvest always being prepared for you. Continue to pray for us. We'll pray for you. Send your prayer requests in as we continue to pray. You can send your prayer requests on Facebook, our website. Send your prayer requests and we'll pray with those things that you're asking us to pray for. 
Amen. May God continue to bless you and God continue to keep you. Amen. As I pray, as we continue to do the work here in the city of Rochester, New York. Amen. So pray for us. Hold us up as we pray for you far and near that the Lord will continue to do a work in your life. Once again, I'm Pastor Nolan with Pastor Sheila, along with Ark of the Covenant. We thank you for your giving. We thank you for you participating with us and being a part of our live audience on today and also our live streaming today. We thank God for you being a part. May God keep you. May God continue to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.